Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. And welcome, everybody, to FanStream Sports, powered by DSP Media. This is the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz, and I'm your host, Rob Fedoff, also known as RPT. You can find me on Twitter, at P. Fedoff. So for episode 73 today, we're going to do something different. The main sports are off pretty much right now. I know we have spring ball, but I don't really like to comment on that until I actually see the spring game. You can read various articles, you know, listen to other podcasts, and, oh, this person looks great. Oh, they're going to be a stud this year. They're going to break all these records. To me, until I actually see it, I really don't like to comment on that. And even with the spring game, you always have to take that with a grain of salt because you're not playing uh, an opponent. You're playing against your teammates. And until Labor Day weekend this year, until we're playing Navy, I really don't like to comment on what I see. But I will comment on the spring game. That'll be a podcast. I believe the spring game's in two weeks. And then also with the draft coming up, I'll have a podcast on, you know, who gets drafted from Notre Dame. And if there's any sort of, you know, news with the current sports now, with you know, baseball, softball, lacrosse, I know they were ranked number one at one point. They're not ranked number one right now. And then also, I'm not going to do it as we get transfer portal kids, but once we have a set team for basketball next year, because we're going to have to go to the portal. I've mentioned that in other podcasts. So once... We get three to four new kids and everything's, you know, locked in. I will, you know, comment on what uh, Coach Shrewsbury did. And it looks like he's uh, pounding the pavement hard to get uh, not just uh, portal kids, but recruits. And once we know for certain who those uh, individuals are, I'll have a podcast on that. But for right now, things are going to be a little bit more easy going, not two podcasts a week. It might be a podcast every other week or every week and a half unless something pops up uh, newsworthy wise. And for this podcast too, um, after the current subject that I talk about, it's going to be a pop culture reference. I haven't done that in a while. I said I would do that when I started this back in uh, last June of 2022. And I want to kind of get back into that, especially when there's not much going on with the main sports. And if, you know, hopefully baseball does well again this year, I'll comment more on that and women's softball and lacrosse but as of right now we may be seeing a little bit more pop culture references and how that uh relates to notre dame is what i'm trying to say so the one thing i did want to comment about and i know i said earlier i don't get too much into the uh you know hearsay of what's going on at spring ball i want to see it actually in the spring game and then going forward but i have noticed during the news conferences uh sam hartman sam hartman He's coming. Uh, he's a grad transfer from Wake Forest. He'll be a six-year senior. He came to Notre Dame. I, I got to think one for the tradition, but I think mo- mostly for to increase his draft staff draft status or stock. I should say his draft stock uh, for next year's draft for the 2024 draft. Had he come out this year at Wake Forest, he's probably sixth, seventh round or maybe not even drafted. If he has a really good season at Notre Dame or just a solid season, I got to think his uh, draft stock goes up. I'm not saying first round or second round. I'm saying maybe third, fourth, but who knows? It just depends how he does this year. But I've noticed him with during the press conferences that talking to the media is not his favorite thing to do. He's not being a uh, belligerent. He's not being an ass of all. He's just... I can just tell it's this is something I have to do and then go on to the task at hand and that he's extremely focused just to get the job done on the field. And that's what I love. I, I could care less if he likes to talk to the media. To him, it's like if just in layman's terms, if I'm not a, a cook at all, but if I was a great cook and wanted to eat my favorite meal of the night, I'd have to go to the grocery, go into the groceries, a pain in the ass, but I have to do it in order to prepare that meal and to eat that meal. If you have a people that have great lawns and they love the look of their lawns. Now, some people do like to mow the grass. I like to mow the grass. I don't, uh, it's not a, a chore for me, even though I live in a condo and don't have to worry about that. But if I did, it wouldn't bother me. But some people love to have a great looking lawn 
but don't like to do the yard work. Same thing is they have to get that done in order to get to the main task at hand or to get the main result at, at, in hand is what I'm trying to say. And if you just, and maybe it's just me, but I've talked to other people that know their sports, know their Notre Dame sports are like, yeah, he does not like to talk to the media. He just wants to get in and out of there, focus on uh, the task at hand and get the job done. And whether I'm not saying we're, you know, he's so focused, we're going to go 12 and 0, but maybe he's so focused that, you know, it leads to nine and three, 10 and two. We don't want to hear that, but at least I'm confident and I feel good that at least he's focused on getting the job done with wins and losses. We'll see how that actually works out. Uh, but if you really just look at uh, look at his mannerisms and just the tone of his voice, I'm saying he's not being he's not being difficult at all. But it's just it's kind of yes, no, very mechanical. Now with the incoming freshmen, that's a totally different story. These are kids coming from the you know Twitterverse, the not so much Facebook because I guess kids don't really do Facebook, but you know the TikToks, you know how many likes am I getting, you know look at me, you know, especially with NIL. Now you want to uh, get that brand going for you and, and understandably. So you want to make some money and, you know, this new age of college athletics. And if you look at incoming freshman, Kenny Minchie, he seems like a really nice kid, good kid, but boy, he likes that camera and he, you know, very uh, outgoing kid, uh, very photogenic. And you can tell he loves talking to the media I've heard like Rico Flores, uh, another incoming early and early freshman. They love talking to the media. It's more about looking and, it, and they're, believe me, they have the team concept down too, from what I've heard. And, you know, we'll see how that really goes down the road, if that's truly true. But with the kids these days now, it's the Twitter, you know, as Jim Tress, what do I say? The Twitters and the Twatters, because he never really knew what Twitter was or and didn't like social media himself. But they like the TikToks, the, you know, how many Twitter followers do I have? And that's fine. But with Sam Hartman, he's 24 years old, six-year senior. To me, just by his mannerisms and just what he says to the media, he wants to win games, win a national title, and increase his draft stock for 2024, which Wake Forest couldn't give him. So that's just my so-called observation for the whole uh, spring ball right now. I'll do my analysis on the actual, how the team looks after the spring game. That'll be on the Peacock uh, network. If you have that, you have to pay. Um, I think it's, I got on a, a deal. It was, it's only two bucks a month now for the deal I got. I think it's a good five to $7 uh, for regular subscribers now. But once, uh, once that game happens, I will comment on that. So kind of related to this topic, you know, who is Sam Hartman? We're starting to get an idea of who he is, but we really don't know who he is until, you know, we see it on the field as well. And, you know, you know, maybe he, if we start winning games, you know, he'll be a little bit more uh, photogenic to the media. That's to be determined, but we really don't know who he is, but he's on a mission. I, I can tell that from, at least in my opinion, from his interactions with the media. Well, for this pop culture reference of mine, I'm on a mission to find out who this guy is, who we really don't know as well. So for those of you who know, I'm a pop culture guy, especially for TV and movies. And there was an extra in the Andy Griffith show, one of the greatest uh, uh, sitcoms, uh, you know, in time is what I'm trying to say. It was from 1960 to 1968 on the CBS network. It finished uh, number one when it ended its run in 1968. And then it led to the spinoff Mayberry RFD. And there was an extra, and I, this relates as well to the subject. Uh, a lot of you know, uh, I've been an extra in various movies. I've been in about eight uh, major motion pictures, no speaking roles, but you can see me and um, at least in these, maybe for a split second, but there's been about eight. One be the, the Avengers, Captain America, White Boy Rick, and there's others out there too. But there's, uh, so I was an extra, and this guy was a extra in 26 episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. He never said a speaking part at all, but his name was uh, uh, Mr. Schwump is what they called him. And um, a lot of people that were uh, into the Andy Griffith Show, they'll know who I'm talking about. It was a older guy. I mean, he's old. 
to me, a lot of people looked older back then. Who knows? He probably was only in his, in his 40s, but he looked to be in his 60s. And 60s isn't old, but just back then, people just looked older. And he had a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A very definitive looking toupee. And I know a lot of guys now don't wear toupees. They pretty much just say, screw it and go bald. At least I haven't seen any, but I remember as a kid, I would see various uh, older guys and I'm just like, that's not their, that's not their real hair. And if you knocked them just a little bit to the right or left, the thing would fall off. And with uh, Mr. Schwamp, I think his toupee was probably like that. And, uh, but anyway, here's the thing. No one knows who this guy is. There's been various not so-called document that, and this is the thing too. I would love for someone and I'd be more than willing to help and assist with this project. It'd be great to do a documentary on this guy. It could take no more than 10 to 15 minutes, or it could take an hour, hour and a half production where we go out and, you know, ask various individuals, you know, who do you think this guy is? Because there's been other uh, websites for the Andy Griffith show and not so much documentaries, but just like YouTube uh, little snippets to say, We've looked over hell and high water. We can't find out who this guy is at all. There's uh, he's not in the credits and he's been in some other stuff. And I'm going to get into his little bit of a brief bio of this person. And no one can find out who this guy is. So Mr. Schwamp is a Mayberry citizen seen in at least 26 episodes of the Andy Griffith show. He never speaks. However, Andy and Barney frequently address him by name in the episode, the fun girls. Andy says, Barney, I'm not going to a dance and stand in a stag line with old man Schwump. It is therefore assumed that Mr. Schwump is single. And some spell it S-C-H-W-A-M-P, others S-C-H-W-M-P. Mr. Schwump has also appeared in Gomer Pyle USMC, a spinoff of The Andy Griffith Show, and Mayberry RFD, another spinoff of The Andy Griffith Show. When the cast and crew were later asked who the actor was, that portrayed Mr. Schwump, no one could seem to remember. It is rumored he he was a friend of Andy Griffith who had actually given him a speaking role at one time in one of the episodes. However, after freezing up on his lines, he remained silent. And then they never asked him to do that again because he just, he would freeze up. The name of the actor who portrayed Mr. Schwump is unknown. However, on April the 1st, 2012, and I'm doing this too because April the 1st was just a couple days ago. Again, everything in this episode relates to something else. On April the 1st, 2012, the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club Facebook page, which is, which is a great, and I think they used to have a web page as well. And they're pretty detailed. If they want to find something out, they do, except for this here. Uh, posted an article identifying the actor who played Mr. Schwamp as Patch S. Wimmers with a full biography. At the end of the article, a link was provided which revealed that the post was an April Fool's joke. So April Fool's Day was what? Last Saturday. And I thought too, this would relate to this whole podcast that I'm doing. No one has ever been able to uncover the real identity of this actor. And then it goes on to say the actor also appeared in an as an extra because he never had a speaking part in the films Christmas in Connecticut from 1945 and Swing Parade of 1946. So this actor, obviously he has passed away. He'd be, he got 130, 140 probably by now. But there has to be someone in his family that knows, that knows this guy somehow. But for whatever reason, nobody can find out who this guy is. And as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, I would love to assist a TV producer, TV director, someone affiliated with documentaries. We need, this would be a great documentary to do. And then the ending being that, yes, we found out who this is, who the family is, who this guy was. Did he have another job? You know, did he just make a living being an extra? He was 26 episodes of the Andy Griffith show. I doubt that paid that much. He wasn't going to get any residuals from doing that. But it would just be great to find out uh, who he is. Just going over my notes here, too. Uh, what else about this guy? Yeah, that's about it. But it to me, just it, it would be great to. Uh, oh, this is what I, I forgot. There is a fan film. I got this at the library, and you can actually order it online as well. 
there's a fan film uh, movie. It's not, it's based on, uh, it's called Mayberry Man. It's about this actor that he gets sentenced to uh, go to a Mayberry festival to uh, uh, more or less see how a, a community, uh, a really nice community, how the, everybody, I won't say everybody likes each other, but it's a community that has a Mayberry fest and the judge thought if he goes to this, he would s stop acting like an asshole and everything. And I don't want to give away too much about the movie, but at the end, there is an Easter egg about uh, Mr. Schwump, AKA Patch S. Wimmers, who isn't really Patch S. Wimmers, but there is an Easter egg in there uh, from that movie. And, and I don't know, and not to change the subject, but a lot of fan film movies are better than actual movies. Uh, I was a part of a, a movie called uh, It's Me, Billy. And they're going to be actually doing, I was an associate producer for that film. It was a fan film sequel, unofficial sequel to uh, the 1974 film Black Christmas. Excellent film. Uh, uh, Dave McRae, who's a, a YouTube, I don't want, he doesn't like to be called a YouTuber, but he does uh, shows on YouTube. Uh, he's a voice actor in Canada. Uh, him and Bruce Dale, his lifelong friend. They did that movie and it was phenomenal. If you catch it out on, uh, it's 40 minutes and they're going to do the sequel this year. So they're going to have a campaign for that as well. So this is like an unofficial plug for that. But, and I found out other uh, fan films too, that you can watch on YouTube or they, you know, uh, if you contribute, you know, like sometimes it's just like a $25 contribution. You get a copy of the DVD or Blu-ray and uh, check out some, uh, but I just, long story short, a lot of fan films are better than actual films is what I'm trying to say. And there is a great one somewhat in with this subject of Andy Griffith show called Mayberry Man, if you want to check that out. But to, to sum up for this episode, it's what I'm trying. Sam Hartman, you know, not a media guy, but he's on a mission. Who is this guy? And then Mr. Schwump, I'm on a mission to find out who this guy is and Everything's kind of related in this episode uh, or this podcast episode here for episode 73. So as I mentioned earlier, things have kind of died down a little. We're going to take a little bit of a break unless something pops up. But uh, if you don't see me for a week or a week and a half, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm just trying to, uh, I want to get some quality subjects and just, just not talk is what I'm trying to say. I uh, want to get some uh, fine content uh, in there. But if you know, hey, if you know who, uh, excuse me who Mr. Swamp is, let me know. And, uh, but I think any, any document documentarian out there or just producer, let's, let's do this. Let's get, uh, let's get this thing going. So thank you so much for joining me for episode 73. And as always go Irish.